Hi guys, here's your video on 8.3, the inverse of a square matrix. So after this video, you should be able to find the inverse of a 2x2 two two and a 3x3 three three matrix, verify that two matrices are inverses of each other, and then solve systems using inverses. So the first thing we're looking at are definitions. So we have two definitions, the definition of an identity matrix and the definition of an inverse matrix. So the identity matrix is a square matrix with ones along the diagonals and zeros everywhere else. So if you look at the first matrix, it's a two by two. You have ones along the diagonal, zero everywhere else. The three by three, ones along the diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. Uh, the identity matrix is used to verify that two, in, two matrices are inverses of each other. So looking at the definition of the inverse of a matrix, it's the matrix when multiplied by another matrix gives you the identity. And just like with the identity, it must be a square matrix. So the first example is just checking to see if two matrices are inverses of each other. So I have matrix A and matrix B. I want to see if they're inverses of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the product and multiply them together. Now multiplying the matrices, you can go ahead and do that right on the calculator. To put the matrix on the screen, it's alpha zoom. I spelled alpha wrong. Alpha zoom. And both of those are two by two, so adjust the settings accordingly on your calculator. So I'm going to hit alpha zoom. It's a two by two. Start typing in my numbers. negative 5, 3, 2, negative 1, and just using the calculator to find the product. So once I hit enter, my calculator gives me, oh, use the wrong color, my calculator gives me 1, 0, 0, 1. And what I'm checking, I'm checking to see if the product results in the identity matrix. So this right here is the identity matrix for a 2 by 2, so that means, yes, they are inverses. If it does not result in the identity matrix exactly, so for instance, this ended up being a negative one, um, then they would not be inverses. So let's go ahead and do the next one. So three, three, eight, five, alpha zoom, negative three, negative three, eight, negative five. And so I'm looking at the product. And this time when I multiplied it, I got 15, negative 24, 16, and negative 49. Not even close to the identity matrix. So that means, no, they are not inverses. Fun fact, if you look at that first matrix, matrix A, 3385, that's my birthday. <laughs> okay, so the second example is a 2 by 2 matrix, or a 2 by 2 inverse, finding the inverse of it. There is a formula for it. Um, so the inverse formula using determinants. So the determinant is just a number, and to calculate the determinant, it's this right here. So we're just following the formula of a 2 by 2 matrix. So you have your matrix A, which is A, B, C, D. The inverse is denoted with a little negative 1 right above the A. And to actually find the inverse, we're going to follow this formula by plugging in our A's, B's, C's, and D's. So for matrix B, if I'm trying to find the inverse, which again is B with that little negative 1 at the top, I'm going to follow that formula. So it's AD minus BC. So this is AD. So 4 times negative 3 minus BC, which is 6 times 1. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take that and multiply it by a new matrix. So your new matrix, your A and D switches spots. So instead of having 4 as my first element, I now have negative 3. And then my 4 is now my fourth element. 
And then your B and your C, they don't switch spots, but they switch signs. So I have a positive 6, that becomes a negative 6, and a positive 1 becomes a negative 1. And then from there, we're just simplifying. So I have 1 over negative 12 minus 6 is negative 18. Multiplying by negative 3, negative 6, negative 1, and 4. And then I can just distribute that negative 1 18th into that matrix. So that gives me negative 1 18th times 3 is positive 3 18ths. And then I have positive 6 18ths, positive 1 18th, and negative 4 18ths. And let's just reduce those fractions. So 3 18ths reduces to 1 6th, 6 18ths reduces to 1 3rd, 1 18th is just 1 18th, and negative 4 18th is negative 2 9ths. And there is the inverse. So if I wanted to check that I actually found the correct inverse, I can multiply my matrix B by this, multiply these two together, and then if it gives you the identity matrix, then that means you got the correct uh, inverse. Uh, finding the inverse of a 3 by 3, that process to do by hand takes a lot of effort. So instead of doing this by hand, anytime I give you a 3 by 3 matrix or larger, you can go ahead and plug it into the calculator. So if I'm trying to find the inverse of matrix C, I'm literally going to take this matrix and plug it into the calculator. But if you'll notice with the notation for the inverse, you have this negative 1 right here. So when I plug it in, I need to put the negative 1 right there. And the way that you do that is there's a button that's x to the negative 1. It's right underneath math. And that's what you're going to type in. So this matrix is a 3 by 3. So I have negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 5, 0, 3, 1, negative 2. I'm going to go to the outside of the matrix. So just a little refresh here, the calculator keystrokes. I hit alpha zoom. That, and then I selected a 3 by 3. Go outside the matrix. So just move to the right once you're done typing in those numbers. And then hit x to the negative 1. And then that'll put that little negative 1 in the top right corner. And then hit enter. Now the calculator does give it to you as a bunch of decimals. I prefer fractions. So to change that to fractions, you're going to hit math. And it's that first option where it says frac. So you're going to math frack it, and then hit enter. So I have negative 10 ninths, 7 ninths, negative 5 ninths, and then 4 ninths, negative 1 ninth, 2 ninth, negative 13 ninths, 10 ninths, and negative 11 ninths. And that is your inverse of the 3 by 3. Technically, you can do the same thing with the 2 by 2 and plug it into the calculator. But finding the inverse of a 2 by 2, the previous example, is actually not that bad to do by hand. So you can just do those by hand. And then any time I give you a 3 by 3, you can do it on the calculator. All right, so the last thing we're looking at is solving systems using the inverse. So we've already solved systems using the RREF method, as well as substitution and elimination. So there is another method to solving the system, and that's using matrix inverses. So there's two things that you're going to set up for this. The first thing is a matrix equation. So the matrix equation is just setting up your system as an equation with matrices. So your first matrix is going to be all of your coefficients. So I have 2, negative 4, 1, and 3. So this is your coefficient matrix. 
Your second matrix is the variable matrix, so that's x and y. So these are your variables. And then your last matrix is what your equation equals. So it equals negative 2 and 5. Um, so I have the coefficient matrix times the variable equals whatever your equation equals. And then to actually solve by using the inverse, so that's the second part. Second part is to solve. We want to get this xy matrix by itself. So if you look at that xy matrix, it's being multiplied by your coefficient matrix. And how do you undo multiplication? Well, you divide. But technically, division with matrices does not exist. So what we do is we multiply by the inverse. So here's what that looks like. So I have my variable matrix xy. That's going to equal the inverse of my coefficient matrix. So again, that inverse puts that negative 1 up in the corner times the other matrix, which is what your equation equaled. And then this entire expression, you can go ahead and plug right into the calculator. So alpha zoom, this is a 2 by 2. I have 2, negative 4, 1, and 3. x to the negative 1 to get that little negative 1 in the corner times alpha zoom. This matrix is a 2 by 1. That was negative 2 and 5. And it gives you uh, 1.4 and 2 point, or 1.4 and 1.2. So your solution to the system is an ordered pair. So your x coordinate is 1.4, y coordinate is 1.2. You can go ahead and use the decimals for that since your decimals terminate and they don't go on forever. So just another way to solve systems instead of doing RREF or substitution or elimination. The last one is a 3 by 3. So a three variable system. So step one is to set up your matrix equation. So I list my coefficients first. So I have 5, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, 0, because I don't have an x, 3, 1. So there's my coefficient matrix times my variable matrix, which in this case is x, y, and z. And it equals whatever your equations equaled. So negative 7, 0, and 17. So part 1 is to set up your matrix equation. Part two is to actually solve using the inverse. So we don't divide with matrices. Instead, we multiply by the inverse. So I can rearrange my equation. So I have x, y, z equals my coefficient matrix to the negative 1, since we are using the inverse, times what my equation equals. So negative 7, 0, 17. And let's take that entire expression, plug it into the calculator. So I have a 3 by 3. Whoops. Typing away. 0, 1, 3. Don't forget the little negative 1 over here. It's very important because you're solving using the inverse times this other matrix is a 3 by 1 because you have three rows in one column. So negative 7, 0, and 17. And the calculator should show you negative 2, 4, and 5. So that means the solution for your system is the ordered triple where x is negative 2, y is 4, and z is 5. Not to write 5, not z. And voila! Alright, so that concludes your entire lesson for section 8.3.